that's a tragedy uh, so at first of no the actual meaning of the word hamlet in an ordinary sense so what do you mean by hamlet the actual meaning the ordinary the very ordinary meaning general meaning of hamlet the hamlet second the novel by uh, shakespeare okay a small settlement generally one small than a village a small settlement generally smaller than a village or a small town that is called hamlet but here the actual meaning of the word hamlet uh, what is the one word that describe hamlet what is the one word that describe hamlet three adjectives that describe hamlet here the, in the in the present context so you knew the ordinary uh, general meaning of the word sin, hamlet but here so far this present topic is concerned so its meaning conveys that uh, three adjectives that describe hamlet are impulsive here the meaning of the word the exact meaning of the word hamlet uh, appropriate to this present discussion is impulsive confused and emotional in the entire presentations from the very beginning till the end we come across these three qualities of hamlet impulsive means impulsiveness confusion and uh, emotional well as earlier i have been di discussing uh, some important points at the very beginning then after we have to touch to the uh, that's uh, the story means act one act two scene two in these ways in not cell then after we have to go to discuss some important questions that are required for uh, essential for your examination or taking your examination into account so now the very first thing uh, Hamlet was written. Hamlet was written during a time of uh, political uncertainty. At the introduction, five to six lines, because we have to uh, just uh, keep in touch with all the important points. Not only to uh, that uh, describe one point uh, in detail, rather all the points in not said. Hamlet was written during a time of political uncertainty and fear, which was, which was, uh, parallels in both the mood and the event of the play. Mood and events of the play. The play was probably first performed. In 1692, when Queen Elizabeth was 68, she had children, and it was uncertain who would inherit her crown when she died. With all um, so these are lines about um, uh, the small questions of Hamlet. And what is the background of Hamlet? Background of Hamlet. Raw material Shakespeare in writing Hamlet. The raw material Shakespeare appropriately presented in writing Hamlet is the story of a dead prince whose girl murders his father and marries his mother. The priest. To be to put a that the manager's is in a revenge. So the background. Then what is the theme of Hamlet? The play Hamlet's major theme is death. So Hamlet's major theme is death. It is the death of the king Hamlet that triggers the events in the play one after another. So you will come to know how uh, almost all the characters are facing death one after another. So that discussion will come to know. 
triggers the triggers the events in the play one after another when the prince hamlet hears about the news of his father's death when the prince hamlet hears about the now i'm just talking about the theme of the hamlet again just uh, recapitulating uh, the play hamlet's theme is death it is the death of the king hamlet that trigger the events in the play one after another when the prince hamlet he was about the new his father had he comes back to denmark He is short. What are the plots in Hamlet? What are the plots in Hamlet? There are three plots in Shakespeare's Hamlet. So we come across three plots in Shakespeare's Hamlet. Then the third plot is the plot. Those subplots involving. The romance between Hamlet and Ophelia, and the looming war with Norway. Looming war means popular, important, as a large share, but is not clear, especially in a frightening or threatening way. And the looming war between. Uh, in, The moral lessons in Hamlet. The moral lessons of Hamlet. The moral moral lesson of Hamlet. We can take two lessons from Hamlet. We can take two moral lessons from Hamlet. The first one is that if people let anger and rage, just listen mentally. If people let anger and rage. Get the best of them; they can cause damage. Again, listen. We can take two lessons from Hamlet, or we come to know the list of Hamlet. The last one is that if people let anger and revenge get the best of them, they can cause damage. The second one is the light. You are able to get away. With something for long, but not for ever. With something for long, but not for ever. We learn what, these what two lessons. Second one. second one is is in life you will able to get away with something for long. Means for a long time, but not for ever. But till the uh, grave words. Uh, but not for ever. We learn these lessons through various actions committed by various characters. Committed by various characters. So now, <coughs> so characterization. Now to know. The list of characters that we come across in the present discussion because it's also very important. Now you just knew some important points in short, three to four lines. Uh, then to know some important lines about some important characters. Then after to go to the act one, act two in these ways in short. Then after to deal with some important questions. These are all. Okay. So now uh, most of the characters in Hamlet. Are citizens of Denmark. Most of the characters in Hamlet are citizens of Denmark. 
and members of the royal court are reeling after the death of their king means facing a lot of troubles after the death of their king becoming extremely worried after the death of their king the characters are deeply suspicious of one another you will come to know uh, in due course the characters are deeply suspicious of one another as it becomes clear that the king may have been murdered and by his brother claudius no less as hamlet is a tragedy each character carries within themselves a tragic character each character carries within themselves a tragic characteristics that contribute to their own downfall but it is in uh, particular the unstable atmosphere the unstable atmosphere of the new court of claudius that brings about much of the action of the play so now the very first and most important character happens to the protagonist of the play the entire play is hamlet hamlet because three are three are adjectives here refer to hamlet impulsive and emotional impulsive and emotional so hamlet the protagonist of the tragedy hamlet's hamlet happens to the protagonist of the tragedy hamlet is a beloved of prince and a thoughtful melancholy young man distraught by his father's death means extremely worried or fed up by his father's death hamlet is only made for depressed by his uncle claudius succession to the throne and his subsequent marriage to his mother as you know that you might have gone through the lines of hamlet that uh, um, hamlet um, uh, father's brother murder hamlet's father and after uh, perpetrating that task or accomplishing that accomplishment just extends his hands uh, to be in love with hamlet's mother and also becomes at last becomes successful and also woos her or marries her so that incident uh, just uh, uh, gave a lot of pain to hamlet so that's a throne and his subsequent marriage to his mother when the ghost of the king means hamlet's father now hamlet's father becomes the ghost of the king when the ghost of the king that is hamlet's father tells him that he was murdered by his brother claudius and that hamlet must avenge him have it means take revenge him hamlet becomes almost suicidal and obsessed with his revenge now hamlet's only aim is to take revenge against his father's murder the murderer so here the murderer is uh, claudius his father's brother So that's all about Hamlet. Then Claudius, Claudius, the play's antagonist. Hamlet, the protagonist, and Claudius, uh, the play's antagonist, is the king of Denmark, and Hamlet's uncle. Hamlet's uncle means father's brother. according to ghost of hamlet's father because uh, after the death of uh, hamlet's father hamlet's father again just uh, comes in the form of ghost 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 and informs everything who killed him and uh, how did they plot to kill him and who accompanied him everything discussed uh, 
coming coming in form of or, or in the shape of ghost uh in the king of denmark and hamlet's uncle according to ghost of hamlet's father claudius is his killer the murderer means claudius has killed your father when we are first introduced to claudius he scolds hamlet for still being so glum about his father's death when we are first introduced to claudius he scolds hamlet for being so glum about so glum about glum means looking or feeling dejected looking glum means looking or feeling dejected sorrowful still being so glum about his father's death and forbids him to return to his university studies in wittenberg claudius is a convincing strategist who poisoned his own brother in cold blood who poisoned his own brother means administer poison to a person or animal either deliberately or accidentally but here actually he didn't de- do it accidentally rather deliberately intentionally here just kill or murder uh, hamlet's father not accidentally rather uh, deliberately knowingly because in order to spread the poison Well, so that's all. Uh, our Claudius, uh, not to know Polonius, 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 the male advisor to the Polonius, main advisor, the king, also known as Chamberlain, also known as Chamberlain. Chamberlain means. an officer who manages household of monarch or noble an officer who takes the charge of a monarch and also known as a chamberlain pompous and arrogant polonia is also the brother of polonia overbearing father of polonia so uh, that's a pompous and arrogant polonius is also known as and lastes so obs now ophelia is polonius daughter ophelia is polonius daughter and hamlet's lover okay so much at the same time acting uh, happens with the polonius daughter and hamlet's lover she is obedient agreeing not to see hamlet any more at her father's suggestion and spying on hamlet when asked by claudius when hamlet and spying spying means a person employed by a government or other organization to secretly obtain information on enemy or competitor okay so he so she here acts as a spy be spying on hamlet when asked by claudius when hamlet kills her father puts ophelia's father hamlet kills ophelia's father and claudius kills hamlet's father so in these ways uh, Uh, killing takes place or uh, that uh, murder takes place when hamlet kills her father ophelia goes mad and drowns in the river whether this is a suicide is left ambiguous whether this is a suicide is left ambiguous ophelia is feminine and almost uh, maidenly 
unmarried throughout the play those is able to counter hamlet's uh, wit hamlet's knowledge na jatrud jatrud ganadur character means queen of denmark she the queen of denmark and hamlet's mother again again sir just to the queen of denmark and means hamlet's mother just know only she is hamlet's mother who again remarried uh claudius hamlet's uncle means hamlet's father's brother just to the queen of denmark and hamlet's mother she was originally married to hamlet's father at the very outset she just uh, was the wife of ham was the wife of hamlet's father the dead king but now father is no more dead but now has married the new king claudius so claudius uh, uh, is the uncle of hamlet Murad, Hamlet's father, and got the throne. Claudius, her former brother-in-law, married the new king. Claudius, her former brother-in-law, with suspicious wondering whether she had a hand in his father's murder. Her love for her her son, her love for her son, remains strong. do hamlet's mother again married to claudius but she had a deep love towards her son hamlet she so remains strong uh, means her love for her son remains strong she also enjoys the physical aspects of her marriage to claudius a point that disturbs hamlet after the sword fight between hamlet and lartes the shoot drinks the poisoned goblet meant for hamlet and dies so claudius had kept that uh, poisonous uh, a poison for hamlet but instead uh, his mother drank it and uh, passed away so then i want to horatian horatian is hamlet's best friend horatian is hamlet's best friend and confidant he is cautious he is cautious scholarly and good man known for giving sound advice as hamlet lies dying at the end of the play horatio considers suicide but hamlet convinces him to live on to tell the story okay so hamlet encourages horatio not to uh, die rather to continue because at the end so will be the only one to describe the entire story from the very beginning till the end so that's why hamlet tried his best to give him a new life he had already decided to die but uh, it is for him only she again continued then lartes he is polonius son lartes is polonius son and ophelia's brother Ophelia's brother. You know about Ophelia, Polonius' daughter and Hamlet's lover. But at the same time, is also recognized as Ophelia is Polonius, uh, Polonius' uh, daughter and Hamlet's lover. Now also, uh, he is Polonius' son and Ophelia's brother. Ophelia's brother. 
as well as a clear foil to Hamlet. As well as a clear foil to Hamlet. Clear foil to Hamlet. Foil means that is shape. Uh, foil means that is to uh, prevent something considered wrong or undesirable. Prevent something considered something wrong or undesirable. So that's uh, as well as a clear foil to Hamlet. Where Hamlet is a contemplative and frozen by emotions becomes very sad and sits on meditation all the time goes on thinking about his, about his father's murder and how to avenge means take revenge that time uh, that is is reactive and quick to action then 14 brass 14 brass he is the prince of neighboring norway his father was killed by Hamlet's father. His father was killed by Hamlet's father. Whose? Fortinbras' father was killed by Hamlet's father. And he is looking for revenge. He is also looking for revenge as Hamlet from the very beginning was looking. Now, Hamlet's only aim is to kill Claudius as Claudius killed his uh, father. So, Hamlet's father killed Fortinbras. Fortinbras is the prince of Norway. So now he is looking for revenge. He arrives in Denmark just at the climax is arrest to kill Hamlet. Because uh, Hamlet killed his father, that's why he wanted to take revenge and uh, reach that place at the end. Then Ghost. The Ghost claims to be Hamlet's dead father. Here the Ghost is known as the Hamlet's dead father, the former king of Denmark. The former king of Denmark, the very first king. He appears as a ghost in the past scenes. He appears as a ghost in the past scenes of the play, informing Hamlet and others that he was murdered by his brother Claudius. The, sometimes the ghost also appears in order to uh, reveal the truth. So what is the truth? Because that truth was unknown to one and all. So to just uh, bring it to the limelight, so the ghost appears and uh, just uh, informs, or discloses it, or reveals the truth that uh, I have been murdered by my brother, my own brother, Claudius. Brother Claudius, who poured poison into his ear while he slept. When Hamlet's father was asleep, or in deep sleep, that time, what happened? His brother, whose brother? Hamlet's father's brother, means Hamlet's uncle, poured poison. Poured poison into his ear. The ghost is responsible for the action of the play, but its origin are unclear. But its origins are unclear. Then Rosen, Kranz and Gilston and Gil Gildenstern. Rosen Grant and Gildenstern, the two last characters, are two acquaintances of Hamlet who are asked to spy on the young prince. 
in order to figure out the cause of his madness. So they are all about to. Uh, they are the characters of uh, Hamlet, the most uh, important characters. Hamlet, Claudius, Polonius, Ophelia, the true to Horatian, Patrius, Fortin Brass, Ghost, and uh, Guildenstern. William Shakespeare's play Hamlet takes place in Elsinore, Denmark, after the death of the King Hamlet. The tragedy tells the story of Prince Hamlet's moral struggle. The tragedy, the present story is known as a tragedy. The tragedy tells the story of Prince Hamlet's moral struggle. How after the death of his father, Hamlet just uh, struggles a lot in order to know the truth and appoints some spies and at last also Hamlet dies. The entire story is known to Horatio and Horatio reveals or speaks the fact. The tragedy tells the story of Prince Hamlet's moral struggle after his father's ghost tells him that Claudius Prince Hamlet's uncle murdered the king. Hamlet's uncle murdered the king. So now act, act one. So what are the happenings in act one? Our performances that uh, characters are performing or uh, things are going on in act one. The entire happenings in not act one, just I am not presenting act one, scene one, act one, scene two, act one scene, no, then this, the entire happenings of act one scene one up to scene five so act one act one the play begins on a cold night with the changing of the guard the two guards were there so one day one guard was the entire happenings and the next day another guard came and took the responsibility of watching so the play begins on a cold night with the changing of the guard, King Hamlet has died and his brother Claudius has taken the throne. As you know from the very beginning, a question may come, so why did Claudius kill Hamlet's father? Only in order to take the throne, accept the throne. So keeping that in view, he did all these heinous activities, has died and his brother Claudius has taken the throne. However, for the past two nights, the guard Francisco and Bernardo, they are the two guards named Francisco and Bernardo. One guard uh, just uh, watched one night and after the next day came the second guard, the latter, that is Bernardo. So, so have, for the past two nights, the guards, Francisco and Bernardo, have seen a restless ghost resembling the old knight, old king wandering the castle grounds. Wandering means moving here and there, moving around the grounds. Who saw? Now these two guards saw. Two guards, Francisco and Bernardo. These two guards saw a restless, a restless ghost resembling, means looking alike, the old king, means Hamlet's father, and moving around that castle. They uh, inform Hamlet's friend Horatio of what they have seen. Understand? So now, uh, the, that scene, particular scene, which is felt by and seen by these two guards 
Francisco and Bernardo, that scene is going to be explained again before uh, Horatio, Hamlet's friend. They inform, who inform? These two guards, Francisco and Bernardo, they told that we have uh, already seen a restless ghost, a restless ghost resembling the old king, means resembling your father, looking or just they uh, look alike, look like your father. And they described it, what they have seen. Before whom? Before Horatio. Hamlet's friend. The next morning, the next morning, the wedding of Claudius and Jatut, the wife of the late king. Jatut is the wife of Hamlet. At first, uh, he was the first wife of Hamlet's father, and again now is going to become the second wife of Hamlet's uncle. So, wedding of Claudius and Jatut, the wife of the late king means dead king, takes place. When the room clears, Hamlet speaks on his disgust at their union. Means whenever uh, they're getting married, so Hamlet is totally dissatisfied on that work. Because uh, Claudius uh, it's a very inferior fellow. It's a very, so to say, an evil-minded, harmful fellow. He can't be compared with his father, as his father's brother, but he can be compared with his father. So taking that into consideration, uh, he expresses a disgust at their union, means at their marriage, which he views as a betrayal of his father at best, and that Post. Here, perhaps, uh, Hamlet uh, just uh, goes on thinking that in order to marry my mother, perhaps uh, my uncle, or uh, that is uh, uh, Claudius, did that work. But tell his father, at best, I at worst incest. Sexual, just in order to establish sexual relations, uh, Claudius uh, accomplished all these uh, heinous activities. Horatio and the guards, Horatio, you know, the friend, the best confidant and the best friend of uh, Hamlet. Now, Horatio, uh, so uh, Francisco and Bernardo, these two guards, now are now exp explaining. Uh, the restless ghost before Ham, uh, Horatio. Horatio and the guards enter and tell Hamlet to meet the ghost that night. To enter that uh, place and wait and uh, just uh, come in contact or come across the ghost. So Horatio and the guards, the two guards, Francisco and Bernardo, because they have seen, they are the eyewitness, they were the eyewitness, now they are explaining everything before Horatio. So both uh, just take a decision uh, to take uh, Hamlet to that place and wait and see that ghost this night. That night, Hamlet meets the ghost, means meets his father, who claims, who claims, am I audible to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay. That night Hamlet meets the ghost because being guided by or uh, advised by the um, guards and Horatio, Hamlet went to that place, uh, waited there, uh, and also got a chance to see. So the night Hamlet, that night Hamlet met or meets or met the ghost who claims to be the ghost of the king, Hamlet's father, the restraints, that uh, after meeting or coming in contact, uh, came to know that 
this ghost is my father's that uh, the specter belongs to my father's ghost who claims to be the ghost of the king hamlet's father the ghost says that he was murdered by claudius the ghost himself uh, speaks that i have been murdered by claudius that claudius puts poison in his ear while he slept you see now the ghost is explaining everything revealing the truth the truth is unknown to everyone but now uh, this person just get to know everything francisco bernardo and horacio so that ghost speaks that i have been murdered by my brother and how did he kill me i put poison in my ear while i slept the ghost orders hamlet to avenge to take revenge the murder but not to the ghost orders hamlet to avenge means to take revenge the murderer but not to punish his mother means his wife that too here the ghost means hamlet's father appears before all and reveals the truth and again advises to hamlet to kill to punish the murderer duly but not to harm his mother harm his mother hamlet agrees ham gives consent okay i agree upon your idea i agreed upon your idea i am ready to put it into use hamlet agrees later he informs horatio and marcilius one of the guards uh, that he will pretend to be mad until he can get his revenge you see now how can hamlet take revenge of his uncle it is impossible but to make it possible so now hamlet hamlet try to pretend pretended to be mad pretended or uh, displayed the gestures and gestures and postures just like a mad until he can get his revenge unless until he can get his uh, revenge till that he pretended to be mad and continued so this is all about act 1 these two guards uh, saw the ghost and uh, described it before uh, hamlet and hamlet's father uh, also appeared before hamlet and the two also two guards and described everything revealed the truth and how that and how did he kill or how was he killed by his brother everything and also ordered uh, hamlet to take revenge means to avenge the murderer but not to punish his mother and hamlet also agreed upon that idea but try to pretend for some days in order to take revenge so there are, these are the lines uh, about act 1 so now to proceed into act 2 now to pass on to act 2 what's happening in act 2 polonius sends because um, a lot of lines are there in act 1 but just i present refer to everything in not cell in short just to give you a clear cut idea or to make you crystal clear then act 2 polonius sends a spy pol you know some lines about polonius polonius sends a spy rinaldo to france to keep an eye on lactis to keep an eye on just to uh, be vigilant over lactis ophelia enters and tells polonio that hamlet entered her room in a mad state ophelia enters and tells polonio now polonio sends a spy so what is the name of the spy rinaldo to france 
to keep an eye on lattice means to have a deep vigilance on lattice ophelia enters and tells polonius that hamlet entered her room in a mad state because now as earlier you knew hamlet uh, has already decided to pretend to be a mad or uh, pretending just like a mad mad man so hamlet uh, entered that room in a mad state mad condition grabbing her wrists and staring wildly into her eyes just like uh, while well, means furiously staring means gazing grabbing her wrist means uh, that uh, grasping her wrist holding her wrist and staring wildly into her eyes into the eyes of ophelia whenever hamlet entered the room in a mad state he hold her wrist tightly and also gazed towards her eyes wildly she also asks that who her ophelia just in form states this was the statement of ophelia that um, she also asks that she has cut off all contact with the hamlet here ophelia uh, presents that i am not in i am not in uh, uh, good terms with uh, hamlet i have no relationship with hamlet polonius certain that hamlet is madly in love with ophelia ophelia speaks that now we have no good terms between so i have not kept any contact with her so hearing that polonius certain means ophelia's father that hamlet is madly in love with ophelia one said the love and that it was ophelia's rejection that puts him in this state because of ophelia's rejection hamlet is acting like a mad or happens to be in the moody state or mad state soon a theater troupe arrives and hamlet requests soon just after that what happens a theater group arrives in france and ham and hamlet requests uh, that the next night they perform a certain play means they have to perform a certain play so being requested by hamlet the theater group started presenting a certain play i have not forgotten the name of that play this the play depicts of a king the exact happenings what occurred with the hamlet's father the exact scene the exact scene as earlier you knew that uh, claudius murdered hamlet's father impelling him to drink poison while she was uh, sorry he was in deep sleep so the same activities are going on in the play played by a theater group so this play depicts of a king the exact happenings who kills his brother boy you see claudius killed his brother yes or no claudius Cla Claudius, Claudius, are you listening? Yes, sir. Okay. So, in the beginning, uh, that uh, Claudius uh, killed his brother. So, in the same play played by a theater group, a king who kills his brother and marries his sister-in-law. so claudius married a uh, hamlet's mother and here also in this scene the king kills his brother and marries his sister in law 
Hamlet believes that the performance scheduled for the next night will make Claudius show his guilt. Claudius was present there, watching the show. So Hamlet thought, so in the next day, next night, some new activities are to be performed in the play. So watching all these activities or scenes, Claudius will admit that I have made this heinous guilt. Well, so that's all about act two, then act third. Then act third. Polonius and Claudius spy on Hamlet and Ophelia as she returned the gifts he gave her. During the performance of the play, the murder of Gunjago, uh, uh, Claudius stops the action just after the scene in which poison is poured into the king's ear. Because the play is going on in act two, you knew, now a theater group has come and acting a, staging a play named Gunjago, the name of that play is Gunjago. Claudius stops the action just after the scene in which poison is poured. Because you know that Claudius just uh, impelled uh, Hamlet's father to drink the poison. The same thing, the same scene also has already been happened with her, sorry, with him. So all the same scene is going on here by the theatrical group or troop. So Claudius stops the action just after the scene in which poison is poured into the king's ear. Hamlet tells Horatio he is now certain that Claudius murdered his father. So now Hamlet became sure, became 100% sure that whenever that act was being judged and watched by Claudius, So, watching the entire scene, Claudius just stopped to the last scene. Means whenever the poison is going to be poured into the king's ear, so Claudius had done the same thing also. Poison the... Um, poured the poison on her, on, uh, in Hamlet's father's ear while he slept. So whenever the actors were going to pour the poison into the king's ear that time. What happened? Claudius stopped that action. Don't do, don't do it again. So getting that, or taking that into account, Hamlet became sure that uh, my father has been murdered by Claudius. There's no doubt in it. <coughs> so in the next scene, Claudius attempts to pray in church, but his guilt prevents him from doing so. So Hamlet enters and readies himself to kill Claudius. So whenever Hamlet becomes sure or knew, this is the fact that uh, my uncle has murdered my father. So. Hamlet decided or made up his mind to kill Claudius at any cost. So that time Claudius had been in um, church or praying in church, but his uh, guilt prevents him from doing so. Hamlet enters and readies himself to kill Claudius, but stops when he realizes that Claudius might go to heaven if he is killed while playing. Uh, sorry praying while praying if i just kill claudius at that time because she is praying to god or sitting sitting inside the church and praying to god so he may go to heaven not hell so that time i shouldn't kill him after that work done i may take what i have thought means i may take the steps what i have thought Gertrude and Hamlet have a bitter fight 
in her bed chamber because hamlet wasn't in favor of her mother's marriage with the uh, mother's marriage with his uncle with his uncle claudius so in between and there arose a quarrel that there arose a dissension disparity between the two the two and that is hamlet's mother the two and hamlet have a bitter fight in their bed chamber when hamlet hears a noise behind the tapestry he stops the intruder during their quarrel someone perhaps uh, tries to enter into the room so unknowingly hamlet uh, just stops the intruder means one who is entering without any permission it is polonio so who who was that intruder that intruder was polonio who died on the spot he died being stabbed by the steward died on the spot the ghost appears again the ghost appears again again hamlet's father appear re rebuking hamlet for his harsh words against his mother because uh, a quarrel was going on both fell out a quarrel means uh, between two started quarrel so uh, because of that because of the dissension or disparities again hamlet's father appeared and started scolding hamlet at a, as earlier he had told that you should not uh, punish your mother you should punish the murderer murderer the man who has killed me to try and take revenge of, of against him ravish him rather you never harm your mother so now whenever the ghost saw that both are in quarrel so the ghost appeared again and rebuked to hamlet not to quarrel with his mother or not to speak harsh words stern words against his mother the two who cannot see the ghost but uh, hamlet is able to see but hamlet's mother is unable becomes certain that hamlet is mad hamlet drags polonius body up stairs because the man murdered by hamlet was polonius the intruder trying to enter into the room without any permission without taking in permission so uh, the ghost again disappeared and ha hamlet dragged polonius body up stairs out of the stairs so this was all about this was all about that's act uh, third unlike which many acts are there needless to discuss uh, so it's uh, time is up now uh so the, now the last act because uh, also i had a matter of mind to discuss with you other thing that the most important questions important questions of today's discussion that uh, character destiny is a character and character and destiny how is it possible in this present play how is it possible in the present play so no time is there uh and some other important questions have to be discussed today so because of want of time unable so now the last act sorry act 4 hamlet jokes with claudius about killing polonius claudius fearing for his own life orders uh, rosencrat and uh, guildenstern to bring hamlet to england Claudius has prepared letters telling the English king to kill Hamlet when he arrives. So now Claudius has sent two persons to other characters and told them to go and bring Hamlet here. 
and plots that whenever you are coming with Hamlet to this place, on the way you kill Hamlet. Uh, so, so a deep red plot was there, made by Claudius. The truth is told that Ophelia has gone mad with the news of her father's death. Ophelia's father died because uh, Hamlet killed last act. Hamlet asks Horatio to explain his story. So what happened at the end? Hamlet asks Horatio, the means Horatio was the best friend of Hamlet, who wanted to die during the in the past scene, sorry, in the second second act, but Hamlet uh, just uh, told him not to die, rather to continue uh, and to revive and to explain the entire happenings before others at the end of the play. So now Hamlet asks Horatio to explain his story because Horatio only knows Horatio only knows uh, everything. Horatio to explain his story and declares uh, fourteen breasts the next king of Denmark and then dies. Then Hamlet dies. Fortinbras enters and Horatio promises to tell the story of Hamlet. Now Horatio being guided by Fortinbras, so decided to reveal the truth, to disclose the truth or to bring it to the limelight. He agrees to hear it, declaring that Hamlet will be read as a soldier. And Horatio started um, uh, that explaining the entire happenings from the very beginning till the end because he was the eyewitness. So this was all about the entire uh, acts, act one, scene, act two, scene, act three, act four, and act five. So no time is there again to go through some other important questions uh, that we come across in the present discussion. So if possible, so to know it in the next that is uh, notes through notes i will provide you some important questions okay yes sir okay sir homer as well as a satirical comedy which are the two timers simultaneously here we come across the features of these two comedies that is comedy of humor as well as satirical comedy so how do you like comedy of humor it's a general dramatic comedy that focuses on a character or a range of characters each of whom exhibits two or more overriding traits or humor and what is okay we'll discuss later on what is comedy of humor and what is comedy of satire or, or what is satirical comedy so now to know uh, some lines in not cell as uh, previously I have been presenting following my own style that's some points of my own uh, some of the important points in not cell then to touch the uh, list of characters as they are very very important unless until you go through the characters you get an idea about the characters you can uh, think of anything so for the present uh, presentation is concerned then after the story if time is there, then we have to go to discuss story, that the summary or act one scene, because in these ways also here, we come across five acts. Act one, act two, act three, act four, act five, act five, uh, consisting of 100 to 200 lines. It's not impossible. But in not selling short also, we'll, we'll be in touch, touch with all these uh, acts, if time permits, then to go some important uh, questions. That the up quoted questions that the students come across every year and also getting every year. So now Ben Johnson, the alchemist, uh, Ben Johnson uh, was an, Ben Johnson was an English dramatist, English Renaissance dramatist, poet, and actor. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. So he was an English dramatist, means Renaissance dramatist, poet and actor. A contemporary of Shakespeare. 
he is best known for his satirical plays particularly means he is best known for his satirical plays this is one among them but also uh, besides that uh, also he has written uh, another two to um, three satirical plays and among them is uh, wolf one the alchemist and uh, Barthol mood pair, which are considered his best and lyric poems. A man of vast reading and simile, in satirical appetite for controversy, he was uh, influenced many poets and writers. Uh, so, times uh, few lines about um, the present. Um, dramatist so now to know some important points in nursery the story so the play concerns the turmoil of uh, deception and ensues when love with leaves his london house in the care of his scheming servant face With the aid of a fraudulent alchemist named Shuttle and his companion Dull Common, Pierce sets about dispensing spurious charms. Spurious means false or fake, not genuine charms and services to a steady stream of dupes. Dupes means to deceive and trick, hoodwink or swindle. Okay. So, what is the main message of alchemist of Ben Jensen? What is the main message or the main theme of the present play? Deception and gullibility. Deception and gullibility are the very foundation of Ben Jensen's The Alchemist. These two words play a very important role uh, in alchemist. The play is based on two con men. Two con men. Con men means a man who tricks other into giving money. Con men means a man who uh, tricks others into giving money or by giving money. So the play is based on two con men, face and subtle, who use deception. to cojen cojen means to deceive to deceive or to swindle or to hoodwink or to trick so here the play is based on two con men and who are they one is subtle and another is face who use deception to cojen or trick gullible londoners Gullible Londoners into believing they are experts of alchemy in possession of philosopher's stone. Okay, so they are deceiving the people by the name of showing different means. Then, what type of play alchemist? So now you knew what the main message of alchemist. That the two here the two messages uh, convey or two messages play very important role in alchemist deception and gullibility. The entire play revolves around on these two messages: deception and gullibility. How the characters here deceive or swindle or hoodwink the uh, ordinary persons, possessing the philosopher's stone. and demanding from them a lot of money in order to give them or change everything well so now what type of plan uh, play alchemist the alchemist is a comedy by english playwright ben jonson so it's a comedy by ben jonson first performed in first performed in 1610 by the king's men 
first performed in 1610 by the king's men it is generally considered jansen's best and most characteristic comedy it is generally considered jansen's best and most characteristic comedy samuel taylor called miss pastry colrich st colrich believed that it had one of the three most perfect plots in literature then what is alchemy in the alchemist by jansen what is alchemy what is alchemy in the alchemist by jansen ben jansen's play the alchemist centers on the practice of alchemy an ancient form of natural philosophy it is an so what do alchemy alchemy is alchemy is that it is Of, uh, change ordinary metals to gold. Ah, change base metals, ordinary or base metals into gold and other uh, valuable metals. So alchemy means uh, that uh, a medieval trendsetter or forerunner of a chemistry. A medieval forerunner or trendsetter of a chemistry uh, concerned with the transmutation of a matter. in particular with attempts to convert base metals into gold or find a universal elixir and alchemist means a person who practices alchemy a person who practices alchemy or a person who transforms or creates something through a seemingly a magical process using a magical process okay so uh, it's a traditional uh, method of transmuting or transforming uh, base metals into some uh, gold or other uh, precious metals so the, uh, that's uh, ben jonson's play the alchemist centers round on the practice of alchemy an ancient form of natural philosophy and early type of chemistry early type of chemistry that sought to create the philosopher's stone A legendary alchemical substance, a legendary alchemical substance that could transform base metals like lead and mercury into gold and silver. So just pour some liquid on it, and uh, all of a sudden or suddenly, these metals uh, just uh, take the different forms. The philosopher's stone. uh the philosopher stone was also thought to produce the elixir of life whose promise to give us ever consumed it immortal life when the philosopher stone so it had a magical power and uh, that magical power uh so it was able to produce one type of liquid and whoever was uh, consuming liquid all on a sudden uh, getting everything we were as consuming becoming immortal becoming immortal alchemy was considered a legitimate form of sorcery or magic alchemy was considered a legitimate form of sorcery now Let me see uh, uh, which characteristics that do we come across in uh, that present uh, play. So the very first one or the very first characteristic is sex and greed. Ben Johnson's The Alchemist is ripe with vice and sin. The play focuses on face and subtle two con men who pose as 
expert alchemist with knowledge of the philosopher's stone to swindle means deceive unsuspecting londoners that means to only swindle or deceive a dupe on suspecting or sorry on suspected londoners known in the play as gulls out of money and loose metal players and subtle work closely with all to get you a doll a prostitute who helps you understand their uh, products and each of the girls they for target are in a search of identity Deception and gullibility. Deception and gullibility are the very foundation of Ben Jonson's chemist. These two things play a very vital role. The play is based on two common men, face and subtle. So now, now the characters. Now to go to on the characters. Okay. So the very first and foremost character of the play is Sartre. The list of characters because they are so very very necessary. Uh, so just uh, also so you have to have an idea about all these characters in Sartre. Then after the uh, acts, Sartre is an alchemist in the play. He also known as alchemist in the play. Means he knows. Uh, How to change base metals into gold? He has got that ability and capacity, or he has got that knowledge. He is an alchemist in the play who runs corn business. Who runs corn business? Corn business means usually when somebody uh, corns another person's corn business means usually when somebody corns means cheats. Or deceives another person, they use tricks and deception to take their money. In other words, they use confidence, confidence trick. That's the term which known as called as the term as con business. The verb con means swindle, drip, defraud, cheat. Mislead or doing all these all the synonyms for having the same different words for the same meaning. Cheating is the kind of cheating or deceiving cheating. So, corn business. So, who? So, so, so is the expert in corn business. It is not clear the name of the surname or the forename. Surname or the forename. Surname or the forename. Character. As the name indicates, subtle indicates. As the name indicates, subtle is very clever and crafty man. He is very clever and crafty man. Subtle throughout the play is in conflict with face, another character. Both are close to each other, intimate to each other. Subtle throughout the play is in is in conflict with face, another character in the play. He is he is elder than face. Who oh, Sartre is elder than Pace, another character, and more learned to have alchemical expertise. So if you just compare Sartre and Pace, Sartre is uh, much more experienced than uh, Pace in producing or creating alchemy, or he has got expertise in alchemy. Means more learned to have alchemical expertise. He is also a doctor. In disguise, 
to run his grand business or that is called corn business grand means corn business it is so it's a corn business it is a corn business means uh, to earn money just by swindling or deceiving or cheating the gullible londoners so now face now to know about face now you knew about subtle he is an alchemist uh, who runs corn business uh, he is very cunning and uh, clever he is older than face and has got complete expertise in uh, alchemy he is also a doctor in disguise to run his corn business disguise not not a real one nominal head but not real head nominal head then face he is a faceless character also he acts as a housekeeper he is a faceless character so what do we faceless character the audience has little or no idea about his personality as he, sir faceless character means means just i'm describing describing uh, so what is the exact meaning of that faceless character means one who all the time changes his uh, activity but at present speaking after some hours uh, may change uh, his um, personality or may be changed yes in all his comportment and deportments everything yes so he is a faceless character the audience has little or no idea about his personality as he is, as he changes his appearances time and again all the time the changing personality he switches his roles constantly switches means changes at present speaking something on a particular topic and after some hours may change his decision and opinion and may give some another new opinion so he switches his roles that is why it is called faceless character he is not uh, that uh, he is always stable as uh, a dynamic dynamic not stable dynamic in his uh, comportment and deportment so uh, he switches his roles constantly some critics think that his real name is jermy Yes, also entitled as another in another name, Jeremy. He is responsible for finding clients for his own corn business. Also, both are uh, busy in doing corn. Who? Shuttle and corn. Sorry, face. Shuttle and face. These two persons, these two characters, are busy in corn business, and brings him to the Lovewit house. then doll doll common also known as dorothy is a prostitute in the play she is regarded as a known as a prostitute in the play the surname common is pon meaning the pon means a joke exploiting the possible means of a word or word play One means a joke exploiting the possible means of a word or word play. So, dullish uh, the surname common is pawn, meaning available to everyone all the time. Whenever uh, people demand, is she just goes and satisfies. So, available to everyone. We come to know that doll has sexual relationships with both face and subtle in order to make them happy and to just expert something by means of giving something. Uh, so as you know that uh, the acts of prostitutes show uh, she does that work show sexual relationships with both face and subtle she is not that important member she is not that of important member of the con business just like face and subtle are she is not a, uh, she doesn't belong to the family but uh, she satisfies them uh, only just uh, for getting some money in view of keeping some money getting some money 
she does her work urgently at the end of the play she runs away with shuttle without any sayar runs away with shuttle without any that is all about doll common or better known as dorothy now dapper now dapper he is an extremely greedy legal clerk clerk extremely greedy legal clerk who wants to get a gambling fly who wants to get a gambling fly its meaning gambling fly means a spirit that will help him to win the game of gambling face when meets face when meets with dapper or the pop tempts him to his black fears houses he has a house so he face uh, invites uh, dapper uh, to come to his house then abel drugger abel drugger he is an honest tobacconist he is an honest tobacconist tobacconist means a shopkeeper who sells uh, cigarettes tobacco and other items used by smokers tobacconist usually available in uh, that is shops is an honest tobacconist who just starts his new shop in the street abel dragger is an tobacconist who starts his new shop in the street he wants face he wants face this guy is as a doctor to guide him in starting a new business he wants face this guy is as a doctor to guide him in starting a new business he likes dempliant a rich widow and wants to marry her who oh, abel ragar likes dempliant a widow and wants to marry her face and subtle plays a trick on him and asks him to bring a lot of expensive tobacco plus dempliant who oh, a face and subtle play trick with the abel ragar and tells them to uh, bring uh, dempliant to their house and his brother along with to the black fierce house at the end of the play he is looted and left with nothing who oh, abel ragar at the end of the play he is looted and left with nothing then love with then love with he the master of the house love with appends to the master of the house who leave for london and hands over his house to his butler jarmi to his butler to his butler jarmi means to his butler means that is a servant to his servant jarmi he is not seen in the play except at the start and at the end of the play he is only seen at the start and end of the play he leaves for london and hands over his house to his servant jarmi so he is not seen in the play except at the start and at the end of the play when lobwit comes back from london because sometimes he had been to london for some works so when he came back returned from london he punishes face for his deeds because face is the housekeeper was at the same time he played the role of a housekeeper as well as uh, con business he also is busy in doing con business he knows uh, that trick how to deceive and uh, swindle the ordinary londoners or persons so whenever uh, lobwit returns from london 
he punishes face for his deeds he marries dempliant and leaves the stage who love it punishes face because of some wrong deeds might be so and uh, marries dempliant you know dempliant from the previous line dempliant who is dempliant oh no no i have not uh, mentioned about him uh, marries dempliant and leaves the state then sar epicure sar epicure mammon another character so lot of characters just i am dealing with some important characters a uh, sar epicure mammon so now you knew the names of these characters subtle face doll common dapper abel dragger love wit so now to know sar epicure mammon he is the biggest uh, con in the play biggest con means very cunning person in the play expert in um, swindling or deceiving people epicure mammon he is the biggest con in the play his name epicure mammon means the only means the one who devotes himself to the material wealth and sensual enjoyments his name epicure mammon mammon means the one who devotes himself to the material wealth and sensual enjoyments he is very greedy and compares himself to the alchemist very greedy because very expert in conning people swindling people so he compares himself to the alchemist he compares himself to the alchemist he is very much obsessed with food and lust he is very much obsessed with food and lust and wants his resources turns into gold by philosopher's stone because he is also biggest con in the play shiv and con biggest con in the play con means persuade somebody to do or believe something by lying to them or an instance of deceiving or tricking somebody persuade somebody to do or believe something by lying to them talking lies not based on truth false ideas false beliefs showing false ideas or presenting false beliefs or false ideas fake statements they just uh, earn a lot of name and fame that is their business right from the beginning till the end they develop that business and earn a lot of money by conning or persuading others believing something by lying to them or telling lie to them then sir pertinax surly another character sir pertinax surly he is the personal assistant of sir epicure epicure you know the biggest con in the play he wants to uh, wants that all his resources should be turned into gold by philosopher stone just like you might have had the name of a but i forgotten uh, i forgotten that exact story um, well so sir pertinax surly he is the personal assistant of sir epicure mammon throughout the play he constantly criticizes mammon and also inquires inquires and also inquires about the action of the face and subtle throughout the play he constantly criticizes mammon means sir epicure mammon and also inquires about the action of the face and subtle surely plans to catch them naked handed catch whom or red handed catch uh, subtle and face 
these two uh, nasty characters surely plans to catch them naked handed disguised as uh, disguised as spanish uh, disguised as and fall in their trick he comes in the form of disguise and wants to catch them red handed but instead he falls in their trap who that uh, sir potinax surly he falls in their trap okay he by chance falls in love with dame plant he by chance not knowingly but unknowingly haphazardly falls in love with dame plant so now tribulation wholesome tribulation wholesome so one more character is there after that to discuss the that the act um the presentation of the lines that what we come across in act uh, the activities of the characters in act one scene one in these ways uh, then after to discuss some important questions tribulation wholesome he is a pastor of amsterdam and leader of anna baptist group he is very greedy for money he is very greedy for money power and leadership he seems to become logical and measure that ananian then ananiaj ananiaj another character he is in the play very furious and very quick to judge anything he died due to his greedy nature ananiaj ananiaj he, he is in the play very furious ferocious also and very quick to judge anything he died due to his greed nature for the last character no two more characters are there castril he is a furious boy who comes to the conman castril is a furious boy who comes to the conman to learn an art of fighting for instance he wants to learn how to argue formally with others he loves arguing perhaps so he wants to learn how to argue formally with others he is quite young having gullible personality he is quite young having gullible personality the way he quarrels throughout the play is unimpressive and immature castrel then dempliant dempliant she is a widow and innocent sister of castrel dempliant is a widow and innocent sister sister of castrel the name dempliant means flexible and blendy his name suggests flexible and blendy she is considered as one of the senseless character in the literature she has some speech problems and speaks very rarely then the last one is neighbors at the end of the play neighbors appear and uh, moved love it and tell him about the conman business about the business of of the fraud fraud business of the two persons shuttle and conman sorry shuttle and uh, face never comes and elicits the truth before love it conman business at his house that he handed over to journey so these are the characters and you knew some lines about this i am just am reading out the name subtle face dull common uh, dapper abel dragger love it sir epicure mammon sir pertinent surly tribulation wholesome ananias 
pastoral dampland neighbors so they are the characters so now to know that is uh, the happenings in or the performances performed in act one scene one uh, because it has five acts so even if we take five periods impossible but uh, to touch everything in short just only to clear our idea uh, so act one scene what happens in act one scene one this scene is laid in love with house you know love with you know who is love with love with is the master of the house who live for london and hands over his house to his butler jeremy this scene is laid in the lobby's house the play opens with a blazing argument between subtle and face means all the time the frustrations go on or the disparities and dissensions or disagreement go on between subtle and face which the dal kamon is trying desperately to come dal kamon is with them so she tries uh, so she tries or she man, just uh, speaks for the both she speaks in favor of the two the where all, all the time falling out in quarrel or um, even busy in quarrel so stop quarreling she just persuades persuades them both uh, subtle and face because all the time they are busy in quarrel doing some sort of untoward things who subtle and face in the act one scene one so dal kamon tries to pacify them tries to pacify them the reason for the argument is not clear why do the quarrel all the time they been busy in quarreling fall out in quarrel so it is not clear stated the reason for the argument is not clear but the basic point is that both subtle and face feel the superior can me at the most important in the success of their business just remember both both feel he feels that i am the superior who subtle feels i am the superior i have got expertise in corn business but face thinks i have got expertise full expertise or i am expert in that business so taking that into account both of them feel superior both of develop a superiority complex so because of that or taking that into account the all the time they fall out quarrel so they remain busy in some sort of quarrel so dal kamon tries to lessen or pacify them so the reason of the quarrel is that both of them claim that i am all in all i am expert i have done lot of developments uh, in the business or i have brought a lot of improvements in the business everything so face and feel superior conman and the most important in the success of their business certain claims that certain claims that he has taught face everything you see what the reason of their uh, quarrel Why do they all the time become quarrelsome? Because subtle claims that he has taught to face everything. He knows, and that face should therefore be grateful. Grateful. Okay. So this is the reason of subtle. Subtle claims that I have taught you everything because you are a housekeeper. You are the servant of uh, love with. so you have learnt everything from me so you are my subordinate claims that without subtel he still he still would have been a mere housekeeper subtel just uh, claims that without my help he would have remained a housekeeper forever so how did you come and how did you take part in my con business it is because of me only okay so uh, therefore be grateful without subtle 
he still would have been a mere housekeeper fierce claims you see these are the lines told by subtle that i am the superior i have brought you and taught you many things well you have learnt everything from me and without me you could not have jumped to this stage so whatever you have got till today everything is possible for me these are the lines told by uh, subtle and then what face speaks face claims Pierce claims conversely that certain status as the titular alchemist is dependent on Pierce bringing in the girls to be gilded. So Pierce claims, no, no, no. But today you have that uh, and a lot of name and fame because of me only. So I helped you a lot. I'm at your back. Had I not at your back, it would not have improved or developed. Have gone to this stature. So everything is possible only by my help. So in these ways, both criticize each other, but each believes that the other would be nothing without him. Okay, that's all about the activities performed in uh, Act One, Scene One, Act One, Scene Two. In short, I presented everything in short. If I go and discussing everything line by line, uh, so line means what happened in Act One, Scene One, what happened in Act One, Scene Two, what happened in Act One, Scene Three. In these ways, so time taking, the entire time will be lost only for describing that Act One. So now Act Two, Scene One, Act Two, Scene One. So whom do we come across? Oh, who are they? What the Sir Epicure Mammoth begins Act Two, Scene One. He appears in Act Two, Scene One with a lengthy speech. So, in Act One, Scene One, we came across uh, uh, the scene laid in Love Wit's house between Shuttle and Face. Between subtle and face, and in Act Two, Scene One, we come across Sir Epicure Mammoth with a lengthy speech. Mammoth has extravagant plans to cure all diseases. He has extravagant plans to cure all diseases, become immortal. Means he also knows. That uh, quality of changing, or he had got that power of how to change base metals into gold. Magic. He had got a lot of idea about that magic or sorcery. So, extravagant plans to cure all diseases become immortal and have sex with several different wives at once. Sare Picure, Mammoth. Uh, as a knowledgeable one, undoubtedly and unquestionable, it can be told that he was a knowledgeable one, but she had sex with several different wives at once. He will he says encounter 20 nights. He will he says what he says in his opinion, encounters when comes across 20 a night. Very ridiculous. Mammoth promises him extensive riches. He promises that I am uh, I have been endowed with a lot of riches. I am the only richest in this world. Okay, I am the only one who has been endowed with a lot of riches. So he claims or promises him extensive riches if the stone does indeed form correctly. This is plainly ironic because face is already making money from the very idea of the stone. Mammon indulges in further lengthy descriptions of his future lifestyle when he is, when he is very rich. 
also he goes on again giving a lengthy expression at first uh, he demands that i have known everything also i have got that ability to change base metals into gold and again after uh, the end of that again comes to the second stage uh, again also goes on speaking a lot about his lifestyle when he is very when he is very rich the rich clothes he will wear the fine food he will eat and status he will be afforded in the world chapter so uh, is lengthy lengthy expression then subtle enters as the alchemist and is treated very respectfully by mammon who addresses him as father face and subtle are delighted that mammon has been further conned means uh, deceived convin deceived further conned and they compare him to a fish and they compare him to a fish that has taken the bait and will now be twist pulled out of the water and killed so understanding the passion and uh, eagerness of mammon they came to know that so mammon uh, that uh, mammoth a figure mammoth is now in our grip at any moment we can uh, just uh, take him into our grip into our custody and we can deceive him also so they just uh, compare him to a fish that has taken the bait going to just consume it and will now be twist whenever just consume it entirely will come under our custody under our clutch and surely he is going to die so that was all about to act to see in one the discussion uh, among these three epicure then subtle and uh, phase you know time is there again to go through the other acts so now the the most important question of the present uh, place alchemist as a comedy of humor comedy of humor alchemist as a comedy of humor as you know that the meaning of the comedy of humor it is general for dramatic comedy that focuses on a character or a range of characters each of whom exhibits two or more overriding traits comedy of humor so comedy before junction was in formless shape before junction it had no form so junction came and gave it a new shape it was unrealistic in character incident setting and speech but junction with his classical background and training was opposed to the romantic comedy of the play he also firmly believed that thoughtless laughter was not the purpose of and aim of a comedy thoughtless laughter to laugh had no reason thoughtless laughter was not the purpose and aim of a comedy it must delight as well as teach he tried to bring sanity and decorum order and balance on the english stage and the artist in him prompted him to take different paths which leads to realism in character setting and speech the play action I mean the action of the play is based on the traditional beliefs of alchemy the action of the the action of the play is based on the traditional beliefs of alchemy on a deeper level the same beliefs 
टेक ऑन ए सिंबॉलिक वैल्यू द आइडिया दैट द मेटल्स कुड बी चेंज्ड इनटू गोल्ड वाज स्टिल ए पोटेंट फोर्स इन द जैकोबियन एज व्हेन ट्रेड वाज एक्सपेंडिंग एनॉर्मसली विद इन द प्ले द गोल्ड सट बाय द ड्यूप्स इज नॉन एग्जिस्टेंट Settle introducing the greatest dreamer of them all. So, now. So it's a satirical comedy. How do you think that alchemist is a satirical, satirical comedy? Sat to know the satirical comedy, satirical comedy means it is the form of satire in which the writer uses comic elements to expose the uh, realities of the society or any problem. The writer here exposes. the realities of the society through comic elements comic elements that is why it is called satirical comedy it is the form of satire in which the writer uses comic elements to expose the realities of the society or any person that's why it is called satirical comedy so how how it is called satirical because the craze of the people or the wish of the people to come by riches by easy method of satirized by easy method is satirized not doing hard labor or uh, taking a lot of pain they want to be rich or they want to accumulate a lot of riches even if doing hard labor taking pain Ben Johnson's intention was reformation and correction of the society. Ben Johnson's intention was reformation and correction of the society. He moved in. He adopted the technique of satirizing the collision of the people, collision of the people, to hold up mirror to nature to see for themselves the reflection. in the play the alchemist he takes up the particular subject of alchemy means a method of changing the base metals into gold in the play the alchemist he takes up the particular subject of alchemy and ridicules it the scene of the play is laid in london shuttle the alchemist which is paraphernalia comes before the audience as a representative of alchemist now subtle is known as the best alchemist he represents faithfully and forcefully all those who have taken up the profession of alchemy or adopted the method of transmuting baser metals into gold so all those who are interested to know that trick they come to subtle and learns uh, it from him the craze of the people to come by riches by easy method prompted them and they flocked to the alchemist so they just uh, wanted to meet the alchemist a lot many people wanted to meet the alchemist because keeping in view that in no time they will be regarded as the richest of the rich richest of the rich so that is one type of satirical view and also statement without doing anything taking a lot of pain if you know anybody anyone is wishing or wishes to be rich so it's meaningless uh, unproductive they are exploited and they are exploited whatever they had in their position because whenever 
unexpectedly they come to the alchemist and they request him to learn them learn them that lesson or that trick so the alchemist unquestionably and undoubtedly explores a lot from them but try to exploit them also in different ways whether by demanding money or demanding any other uh, that um, things as a matter of fact the so called alchemist were having a thriving trade because of simplicity and foolishness of the people so the alchemist here try to just uh, deceive or cheat the people by foul means by foul methods so that is one uh, feature of the satirical comedy so the playwright satirizes the people strongly by presenting the dual nature of the persons what do they do at the very first just resort to some unlawful activities illegal activities how to be reached in no time and after some if they fail if they do not become successful how all of a sudden they change their opinion that the dual nature dual nature of the persons so has been satirized here okay no time is there so some other two two three more questions were there to be discussed uh, but uh, as within this short span uh, we knew what some uh, required we knew uh, some important points in nursel also the characters acts in short then some important questions because time is one hour discussion is more but time is one hour so within that what's required uh or so essential that we knew and also discussed till the best of our ability and capacity also and to 